Once you've installed and configured your Groove.io nodes for the first time, you're ready to start doing something more substantial with your data. If you haven't already installed these nodes, set up a localhost device, and gone over how to configure these, go ahead and watch our previous video. In this video, I'll be reading in a button on module 0, channel 0, and using that button press to trigger an email that will send out whenever the state changes. Now your trigger doesn't necessarily have to be this button press that I'm going to be reading in, so you can use whatever you want there, just make sure that you have something to trigger the flow so that it knows when to send the email. The next thing is to of course install the Node-RED email nodes, since you'll notice they're not included with the core nodes that come pre-installed with Node-RED. To do that, I'll need to come up to the menu in the top right and select Manage Palette. I'll need to have an internet connection to be able to install the nodes, but since I'm already connected to Ethernet, I can just search Email, and this is the one I want right here, Node-RED Node Email. So I'll just go ahead and select Install, confirm the installation, and then I can click View Log to see that it's coming down. Now, depending on what version the node is at and what version of Node-RED you're running, you might see some warnings here. But as long as we get a return code of zero and see the nodes added to our palette, everything will work okay. So just sit and wait for them to finish installing. And there we go. After just a couple of seconds of waiting, we can see that we have this return code of zero. We have this green pop-up confirming that the nodes are added to our palette. So we'll just go ahead and close out of this, and there we go. We can see we have a new social tab here with our Node-RED emails coming in and to send emails with this bottom node here. So I'll just drag one in and we'll select it so that we can see how to configure this in the info tab. So we can see here the body of the email needs to go in message.payload, but the subject goes in message.topic. There are some other properties you can use here like message.to, cc, and bcc to determine who receives the message if you want to send it to more than one person or even an entire team, or if you double click the node, you can see that the recipient can be configured statically inside the node. This is what I'm going to do. So I'll send it to myself, developer, at opto22.com. But when I come down here for my user ID, I am not going to use that same personal account. The reason for that is I am going to have to add an application password to enable Node-RED to access my account and read my emails. I want to keep this separate from my personal account, so I've created a new email, optoalerts at gmail.com. Now I am going to try first logging in with my regular password, and that's not going to work because it's not an application password. I'm going to put it in anyway so we can see what happens and what we need to change to make it work. Now I'll give this node a name like send email, and we'll go ahead and configure how we're going to write the email. Because we're just reading in an input here, true or false, we want to turn that into an actual email body and set all the different properties we need. To do that, I could use a change node up here and set the properties individually, but I'm going to use a function node so we can do some more intense processing. So I'll just wire that in, make sure it's wired in, and double click it to configure it. Here I'm going to be writing the email. And so I will need to set my properties. For example, I can set my message.topic to be the, the button has been turned on. And then I could send some kind of payload, like message.payload equals the button was turned on at. And then I just want to add a nice simple date string so I know exactly when it was toggled. To do that, I can just say new date dot to string. This will give me a nicely formatted date that gives me all the information I need. Now, again, I could do message.2 and set some recipient at mail.com and add some others here as well. But like you saw before, I'm going to be using the static settings in the node. I just want you to know what that looks like. Now, because this message is for when it was turned on, I can also add another message for when it gets turned off. All we need to do is check if message.payload is equal to true. We want to set the properties to be these. Otherwise, or else, I'm going to make a copy of those and just change the text to say that it got turned off. Now I will get two separate emails based on whether the incoming topic is true or if it's false. Now these two different paths will give me two separate emails so I know the actual value of it, not just that it's been toggled, but how it's been toggled. 
So now that I know my email is written, I can just click done. We'll see the email come out. And we also want to see it in the debug pane. So I'll press and hold left control and left click on my workspace just to quickly drop in this debug node. But I want to see more than just this message.payload that's the email body. I want to confirm that my subject is correct as well. So I'll double click this node and switch it from message.payload to show the complete message object. Now when I hit done and wire that in, I know I'll see everything over here in the debug pane. Now I can go ahead and deploy. We'll see that the button has come in and it comes in as turned off because currently the state is false and we want to alert them of the current state. But I'm getting this invalid login that my password is not being accepted. That's because I'm using my standard login, not that application password I was talking about before. Now let's head over to the other Gmail account and see how to configure that. So in my other Gmail, I'll just come up and select settings and come over here to manage your Google account. You'll need to come over to the security section to get to the application password. And then we can come down and see that my two-step verification is turned off and that I do not have less secure app access enabled. Now, right now I could turn insecure app access on and allow Node-RED to use my password that way, but this method is not recommended by Google and it is going to be phased out in the not too distant future. So rather than taking this route, I'm going to come up and I'm going to add a two-step verification so that I can create an application password. You can't create an application password without two-step verification, so you will need to go through this process. I'll select this, click get started, and I will have to put in my user password again. Now that I'm logged in, I will need to put in either a phone number to get my text message or phone call to confirm that this is in fact my account. I'm not going to show you what I put in because it's going to be my phone number, but this process is very straightforward. Now that I've confirmed my two-step verification, I can go ahead and turn on the feature. So now that the feature is turned on, I'll go back to the main menu and we can see now I have the option to create app passwords where currently I have none. So again, I just log into my account with my usual password and here I can create entirely new applications. I'll create a custom one just for Node-RED. Now when I click generate, I'll get this password generated here. This password is going to be different for every app you create and it'll be different for every account. So obviously this code won't work for you. I'll just copy that to my clipboard, hit done, and then we'll bring this back to Node-RED. Now here in Node-RED, I just double click the email node. I replace that old login password and paste in my new application password and click done. So now when I click deploy, we'll get that first off status come in, the current state of the button. And in fact, we do get the topic, the button has been turned off and no errors from the email node. So now if I bring open my email, we can see, there we go, the button was turned off and the time it was toggled off. If I go back to Node-RED and toggle the button on, we'll get another email, this time saying that the button has been turned on, and go back to my email. We'll see, there we go, we have another message saying that the button has been turned off. So now we're getting appropriate message subjects and appropriate message bodies that include useful information like the current time that the button was toggled, and it's all coming through this nice easy flow here. In future videos, I'll show you how to receive emails into Node-RED or how to send emails with attachments. Thanks for watching.